Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the finest Dawn of War, Soulstormcast, this side of East Yorkshire. And today I have a one versus one on Meeting of Minds. Over in the Orc corner, we've got Funeral. And over in the Tower corner, we have got Bloody Monster. Bloody Monster going to go for triple Stealth Suit Teams, Jetpacks, Earthcast Builder and a Tau Barracks. Whereas the Orc player is going to go for double Sluggers, Grot Squad and a Boy's Hut. It's Orcs versus Tau. I don't believe that this map has any major implications for either faction. Both are quite comfortable with the size and scale and the environments going on here with all these choke points and whatnot. Interesting matchup though, in the sense that the Tau have access to uh, long range capabilities in the form of a Tau Commander and Fire Warriors, but they also have options for crews and stuff, so while you might think that Orcs might be able to combat the Fire Warriors with their Storm Boys and their big mech and whatnot, if the Tau do go for crews, they the Orcs might have to double think on their strategies. They are going to go for some Shooter Boys. So it's, it's kind of like a bit like rock, paper, scissors in a way, I suppose. Croots would not fare too well against shooter boys with big shooters. Uh, slugger boys wouldn't do too well against um, Tau fire warriors and whatnot. So I think early scouting in this game, finding out what your opponent's going to do before heavily committing to one composition is uh, probably going to be key in this, I think, anyway. We do have some slugger boys moving over on this side. And like we say, might be going to see if they can have a look and see what the Tau player is up to. We'll notice a Tau commander jumping over the mountains as he comes. Firing away at range. There's a significant amount of damage at range. Already in the space of five seconds, was wiping out an entire model. Orcs will have to, not going to auto reinforce, but will constantly try and top these guys up as they're going to go in for trying decapping purposes. Listening post already being popped on this place though, so won't do all that much in the grand scheme of things. Earthcast Builder over here also going to do something very, very similar. So Slugger Boys, good effort. Trying to look at all these listening posts and whatnot, but not quite getting anything done. Stealth Suit Team now is capturing this bit and bob over here. In fact, swap over to the tower player so we can see what Stealth Suit Teams are up to. We have another one manoeuvring around on this side of the map here. Orcs just capturing their bits and bobs. Big Mech not being too aggressive early on in the game. Don't necessarily need to be too aggressive against the Tau. As you would say, someone like the Dark Eldar, Necrons, or anyone like that. Slugger Boy's been pushed away, losing a couple of their number. Fairly cheap to replace though, 30 blue money. Not the end of the world. Big Mech with his shooter lads now moving forward. Ah, they've gone for Kroot, so that's, that's an interesting development. Big Mech. Firing away at this Tau Commander. Tau Commander blasting him with a big shot. Slowly. Um, not slowly. Reducing his movement speed ever so slightly, but also taking a big chunk of health. It's that one shot there. Groots, and they're, 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 they're a beautiful green shade, I do have to say. Beautiful avian lads moving forward. Going to see if they can prevent these guys from capturing this critical location in the middle. Critical location victories in this map are quite difficult to maintain but also if the other player has the, has the upper hand in critical locations I mean you do have one being defended over here so this critical location in the middle is quite an important one now moving over here stealth suit teams triple in number decapping this relic before the grots are able to get something over it do love the placement of these war banners though will help defend this listening post over here in this small choke point Stealth suit team has been completely wiped out there. That's very unfortunate. Not quite been able to decap that listing post. Or that relic, should I say. Tower Commander not wanting to stay in that dead end will jump back away. Boot squad following around these slugger boys. Problem with melee squads is that if you're trying to tie up someone who's running away, you can't really get those melee hits on them. As Tau shall. The silent hunters already. Stealth suit team having a look at that critical location but deciding to not go for it. Do have this relic not relic, this critical location going to be decapped by the orcs here. Fire warriors now are on the field. Do like a tower player who's able to do a bit of both, combine the crews with the fire warriors. Do feel that, that is probably the ultimate combination. Sometimes you see players only go for Fire Warriors and they end up getting overwhelmed by people just moving into close combat. But if you've got those crews in for screening purposes, 
Not always very good. Storm boys though out. So these tower boys will have to be very, very careful when engaging. Do have a snare going on over here. I feel like I was placing the snare around where the storm boys will probably jump in. Big Mech slapping around this listing post. Big Mech has got very big building bashing potential with his power claw. Storm boys not so much, but when they get their storm boy knob and upgrade them with a power claw as well, that's good. Oh, actually they've got triple storm boy squads at the moment, so definitely primarily going in for that close combat build. 110 and 30 compared to 104 and 10. But fairly even, blue money wise. Green money going to the tower. Stormboy's jumping right in, going to be stunned. Or slurred, should I say. And Stormboy's, from what I understand, they jump in, and they've got enough jumping juice to jump in. But I don't think they've got enough jumping juice to jump straight back out. They have to wait a little bit before they do anything like that. Getting good surround on that Tower Commander, but Tower Commander also has jumping capability. Very hard to tie up that guy in close combat for very long. Computer Boy's going in for their big shooters. Stormboys, they are heavy infantry, so they will be able to stand up to the fire of these crutes and stealth suit teams, but against the fire warriors, getting wonderful use of this terrain. I'm able to fire through the mountain. Just to be fair, I think it's a little bit broke, but this game was invented many, many moons ago. So we can forgive them. One grot over here. Not sure where his life's going. Just kind of moving forward. Oh, he was probably planning to build some bits and bobs up over here but will not survive for much longer Peter boys falling back to heavy cover Groots are not going to survive all that long but they have been eating they've been getting their 5 a day 75 plus health on each individual model Slugger boys over here being harried by the invisible stealth suits Orcs do have a bit of an issue dealing with what would you call them stealth detection as only the big mech in the early game can really see them. Got a Path to Enlightenment going, so tier 2 for the Tau. And do we have tier 2 for the one attack. one war banner away from taking up? Stormboy's going to get a good surround on this listening post. I suppose that's what the Orc players do at the moment. He does have the maneuverability advantage. So ideally, wherever these Fire Warriors are, you would move your Stormboys away and then just bash whatever you can. And then by the time that these guys catch up, you then move to somewhere else. Because even when they get their Devilfish troop carrier, that, that troop carrier is not all that fast. It's stealth, don't get me wrong, and stealth is a is an amazing thing for a troop carrier to have, but it's not the most manoeuvrable thing. So they've got to bash two listing posts yet, and then they're going to jump straight in. There's no crews to screen for them, so they're just going to go straight in. And with their super duper speed upgrade will be able to stay in close combat even if these guys are running away power claw on the stop on the storm boy knob as well do absolutely lethal damage to these fire warriors power commander being ignored firing away the best he can has been upgraded with his flamethrower going to do a bit of morale damage but shooter boys with their big shooters as well as the big mech will be able to hit out dps even the tower commander at long range combat and there's just absolute chaos and mischief going on in Tower Base at the moment. Crew going to try and go for a flanking manoeuvre on these Storm Boys. Not all these, sorry, the uh, Shooter Boys. But what not quite get them. Now being in close combat with these Storm Boys. Big Mech teleporting around the mountain. Has to commit now, though. Won't be able to get out there very easily. XV-88 broadside battle suit. Ideal against vehicle and aircraft at this given time. We'll have to plant his feet firmly on the ground if he wants to get any good anti-heavy infantry damage going on. Well, mind you, these Storm Boys, they've, they've kind of... Doesn't look like they've... Uh, oh, no, they'll, they'll survive. But maybe now is the time to push back a bit. They have done a lot of economic damage in the form of two listening posts. But with this broadside battle suit and these stealth suit teams being upgraded with their... Whatever you would call them, their... Um, what would you call them? Where have they gone? They've got that. They've got that weapon. What is it called? That the main dude has. Ah, oh, there we go. The 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 stealth suit Shasphere, which has a decent weapon on him, which will do a good amount of damage. But yeah, they've they've, they've taken a grand total of three listing posts down. Next two and forty, compared to one hundred and ten and ten. 
Jobs are good and Still on tier two though, so not being able to capitalize on the damage he's done. The Tau has been able to hold off the Orc player. This is still a scary amount of Storm Boys. But unless he keeps the Tau player hemmed in, I suppose, keeping him away from these critical locations, preventing him from rebuilding these listening posts too much. XV88, a wonderful unit and a beautiful model as well. Absolute chunky lad. Who needs hands when you've got missiles? And the Orcs are moving back for for reasons. They, they've, they've got the manpower, or the Orc powers, I suppose. This this listing post is a bit undefended, as well as listing post... Well, not, not necessarily this one, but... The Orcs have the potential to just be an absolute nuisance. With this sheer amount of lads. Big Mech going to be rebuilt, so he was killed at some point. Another generator being popped. What do you want? Fire Warrior team Four moving forward. Until taken a bit brave. Victory. I'll give him that. He's got no... If the Storm Boys decide to jump on these guys, these guys are going to be in a world of trouble. He's got no proper retreat path, especially when they're moving through heavy cover. They will be a little bit slower. Everyone now jumping in. Big mech as well. Everyone going for everyone. Slugger Boy still in the mix as well. XV8 broadside battle suit. Been taken down quick as you like. Stealth suit team armed with double fusion blasters. Firing away. Lost the snare trap over yonder. Well able to slow down these storm boys, but fire warrior teams not doing all that well in the grand scheme of things. Pathfinder team on line at the moment. Will target these storm boys, increase the amount of damage that they take at range combat. And to be fair, I poo pooed the, uh, the, the, the fire warriors at the moment, but they've absolutely managed to wipe out. Almost all of these storm boys. Still got a good number over here, but managing to peel away, so to speak. Are being reinforced, still a little bit surely. Fusion blasters on these stealth suit teams doing the work in. Going to jump in, trying to tie up this tower commander. We're not going to succeed as the tower commander jumps over the side. And now they're in prime position for the tower. Fire Warriors and Pathfinder teams just to fire away at them. Targeting going on these Shooter Boys. One Storm Boy score is going to peel away from the mass. And try and tie up these Fire Warriors. But deciding against it as they are being absolutely annihilated. Managing to take down a Listing Post. Going to be instantly rebuilt there. And the Orc player has a lot of resources been floating around at the moment. What's he spending it all on? He's spending it on another war banner, another generator, so more DACA research. Although he does have, it does have the critical location picture on the go. One hundred, oh, sorry, one minute and fifty seconds left. We'll probably just defend this one up here. Orcs over here going to defend this middle ground. Although three slugger boys might not be the ticket. But Tau player will have to decap two strategic points in short succession if they wish to do something about it. Stealth suit team going to decap this place over here. And they will probably do it. The Slugger boys don't have the DPS to stop them. Lots of Storm boys still smashing up anything and everything. 88 broadside battle suit. Once again in a bad position. Probably not the best unit to go for when you've got so much in the way of maneuverability. Fair play if the Orc player was going for mass shooters and flash kits, but probably not the way to go for this. So he's going up another one, he's brave. Storm boys, that is, that is a lot. That, it does look like they've managed to destroy nearly all of the Tau. Do have a Fire Warrior team over yonder. Got some more lads not quite here yet, but... I mean, even with all the tech upgrades and whatnot, it's... Against just such, such a consistent mess of Storm Boys, there's, there's very little you can do, really, in the grand scheme of things. Do have a bit of money to play with, that. And we're going for some more Fire Warriors, going for another broadside. Fire Warriors over here being chased around by the Sluggers. Moving into the defensive capabilities of these 
listening posts. One main problem that Tau have, especially with these consistent attacks, I suppose, is that they're one of the few races that don't have access to any turrets. I think it's only Tau and, memory serves me correct, Dark Eldar that don't have any turrets in this game. So their defensive capabilities aren't as good as other races. I'm going to go for a full scale war research. List, uh, listing points here too over yonder. Another big jump. Firewall is once again being tied up. Power Commander doing his best with his missiles, flamers, and fusion gun by the looks of things. And he's not gone for his plasma rifle as of yet. Done by Knob being taken down there. That is, that is a, that's a very good get. One squad wipe down there. As long as they can take down one, it at least reduces the overall reinforcement capabilities of the Storm Boys. So that, that's that's a good get for the Tau player right there. Sure, boys, without the Storm Boys screening for him, aren't going to do all that well. Do have a knob squad now out on the field. Interesting choice. I would have probably saved it for some, what do you call them, some flash kits. You've already got a screening squad over here, get some flash kits involved, and then, and then not only have you got some good DPS up front and personal, you've also got some good DPS at range. We'll probably need to get maybe some war trucks to get these guys useful. But I can't see any big mech doofers about. Sorry, not big mech. Um, big mech workshops, that's the word. Broadside battle suit. Real pain with these guys is that because they're heavy infantry, you can't really repair them. Which you, you would imagine that you would be able to repair them. But there we go. And yeah, the Storm Boys seem to be waxing and waning a little bit here. Not really getting all that much done. They did manage to get that li listening purse down. As well as decapping it. But the gun line... And I do quite like how uh, Bloody Monster is keeping all his units a little bit spread out. So the Storm Boys do jump on them. They won't be able to tie up all the lads straight away. Good placements of these Crosser snare traps. It's a nice little shall. spread out kind of placement, I guess. 117 and 49 for the Tau, compared to the 117 and 29 for the Orcs. Got a mega armor knob over yonder. Lost their big mech somewhere on his travels. Oh no, never mind. He's back. Whipping and raring to go. And now it's the Tau's turn to lay siege. Still got two squads of Storm Boys. Mega Armor Knob as well. It's got three in total at the moment. Yep. Gone three. Will go for an extra one as well, just for good measure. One squad of Storm Boys jumping in. Knob. Ah, I see. There we are, sir. No need for, for a war truck when you can have a big mech teleporting your knobs in. That makes sense. Although, teleporting straight on top of a snare will make them a little bit useless, I suppose, in the grand scheme of things. Mega Armor Knobs using the speed up ability will do damage over time from that we want to turn that off when they're standing still firing although micro is quite difficult in this game devilfish troop carrier in the mix been zapped by the big mechs tank zapper broadside battle suits been cut down quick sharpish and without the infantry detect well the stealth detection from the big mech or the mega armored knobs these Storm Boy knobs are, or the Storm Boys, should I say, aren't going to be able to do all that much against these Delphish troop carriers. 12 knobs, that, that's a lot of knobs. Definitely an art version of a sausage party. Removing decapping bits and bobs. Broadside battle suit falling. We do have a Montcat command post going on. We're going to go for, ah, we're going to go for some crisis battle suits. Which do a fair number of damages um, in the ranged game. Can also stand up to a bit of punishment themselves. Mega Armanov's just taking the damage from a distance. Big teleport in. Stormboy's turning around, going to. Ah, there we go. I quite like that. So that they're body blocking the Delphish troop carrier inside these narrow corridors. More Stormboy's jumping in over here. Price battle suit, going to be upgraded with a flamer. But does do a serious amount of damage in close combat. Oh, I'm sorry, in range combat. Do you believe it still fires when it's close combat as well, so you can't really tie it up? 
is susceptible to being um, killed for target fire though it is only one model but I suppose if, if you're up against some storm boy has been surrounded you don't have so many models surrounding you so pros and cons although against a squad of knobs of course combat not going to be the best time for him absolute chaos and carnage once again in the tile base Mega Armour Knobs not really going in for close combat. Quite content with firing from the heavy cover. Knob squad there. Looks like they've gone for a complete and total squad wipe there. Being slow but surely fired away by this Devilfish Troop Carrier. As well as those Fire Warriors. Gonna go for another Devilfish. Not sure where Tau Commander has gone. Is it still alive? It's still alive. It's still kicking. And the Roaring Green Tide does look like it's been broken on the shores of of the Empire of Tau. Dawn Boy's not looking too healthy. Another squad wipe going on down there. Yeah, that's a uh... dear oh dear. That, that, that's that, that's that's not the best situation for the Orc player, really. I suppose what else what else can the Orc player do at, at this stage? Like I say, I think Flash gets would probably be the the vibe. Now fire always moving forward. Now is the time to capitalise on the Orcs' lack of numbers. More stealth suits coming out. Stealth suit ready. Personnel carrier ready for action. Got some tank busters on the way. Funeral throwing out some bits and bobs. Assume it's friendly banter. Personnel carrier ready for action. And he throws out a. Is that GG? I believe that is. Rest of recuperation. Oh, well. Maybe he just lost morale after losing all his, his bits and bobs and then deciding, you know what, no point. Can't do it. Which is a shame because I reckon that the, the game could have still gone either way, to be honest. I mean, Tower Player, I mean, he had, he had his Delphi's troop carriers packed to the brim with boys. He would have probably taken out a good chunk of the Orcs' um, economy and whatnot and maybe a load of war banners. But it was still all to play for, I guess. But you never know. In the grand scheme of things. Still still a very exciting match. Lots of jumping bits. Lots of fighting and whatnot. Cool. Anyway. My name's been Mr. Lunchak. Pleasure as always. Never chop. And I'll see you in a bit. Peace.